Hi, my name is Rick Golda, and I am a product marketing manager at Percona. I'm going to talk to you today about Postgres, giving you a little bit of an understanding of what it is, what makes it unique, and why you might choose to use Postgres over another database. So first, what is PostgreSQL? PostgreSQL is most commonly called Postgres. As you'll hear me calling it Postgres throughout most of uh, this discussion here. Um, it's an object relational database management system. A and what does that mean? That means that it occupies the world between the classic relational database management systems like um, Oracle and MySQL and true object-oriented database systems like Visual Foxpro and Intersystems Cache. Um, what this does is this takes the relational database concept and adds a lot of custom functions in, and it allows you to use a bunch of different programming languages in it. And, and that's one of the real key characteristics of Postgres. It was designed to be extensible. And given that, it allows you to do a lot of things that you can't really do in a lot of other databases. Um, you can define your own data types. You can go in and you can define your own types of indexes and such. So you really can take this database and make it like a lot of other database products that Percona works with. Postgres is also 100% free and open source software. Uh, one difference is that it is licensed under the Postgres uh, license instead of under the license that is used for MySQL. Um, this is based on uh, an application called Postgres 4.2 that was developed at the University of California, Berkeley back in the day. And this product is very well accepted in the community. It's in use at a lot of companies. Let's talk about some of the ways that Postgres is similar to and different from MySQL. The first feature we're going to look at is security. And this is an area where Postgres was really designed from the ground up to uh, kind of have different security and, and uh, options for controlling security and access than a product like MySQL. Um, Postgres uses roles and therefore can inherit roles. So that this is how you're going to go through and you're going to deal with uh, all of the permissions that come up in the database. Um, it also has native SSL support, so it is able to encrypt your client server communications very nicely and easily. There's even SE Postgres, which is going to give you additional levels of access control if you're running a security enhanced version of Linux. On the MySQL side, of course, in, in that we're using ACLs, access control lists, and we're going through and uh, using those to control who can connect, who can do queries, and things like that. We do also, in MySQL, have support for SSL, but again, in Postgres, it is native support. In MySQL, it's something you're adding in. If we look at JSON and NoSQL support, once again, both of these do support JSON and uh, do, do a lot of, diff uh, of similar things here. But the place that Postgres becomes a little bit different here is that you have other features for uh, supporting NoSQL data, like you have your XML support, you have key value pairs that you can deal with. And the other thing that Postgres adds into the mix is the ability to have JSON data that is indexed so that you can locate information within your JSON more quickly. Um, and this is something that does not uh, exist in MySQL at present. And then the third one we're going to talk about here are materialized views. These are fully supported within Postgres, and as you know, they are not supported in MySQL. In MySQL, we can do views, but we can't have material. Another area to compare the two products is in their handling of geospatial data. In Postgres, this is supported via the PostGIS extension, and this provides us with a bunch of different types and functions that exist specifically for the uh, manipulation of geospatial data. data. Of course, in MySQL, we do have support for geospatial as well. Um, but really, geospatial is one of the areas that Postgres really does shine in terms of its capabilities. Um, if you're looking to do a lot of work with geospatial, that may be one of the big reasons that you do look to a product like Postgres. From a support for programming languages side, this is another area where Postgres really does come into play. Uh, you can see that there's a, a rather large list of languages that are supported here. And one of the big real differences with Postgres is that you can use the right language for the purpose that you're dealing with at present. You don't have to stick with one uh, programming language on the server side like you do with MySQL. So you get a lot more flexibility and a lot more capability. And also, really, it, it allows you to do some kind of more advanced things in there. And this all leads into the idea of extensibility. 
And this is another area for Postgres to really step forward. Um, as mentioned earlier, Postgres was designed from the ground up to be extensible. So uh, while with other databases, you're kind of constrained by the capabilities, features, and such that are within the database. With Postgres, you can really go beyond that so long as you have the ability to create your own data types and functions and things like that. You can really customize it to be exactly what you So this brings us to why would you choose Postgres over another database? And really there are a few key reasons that you might make that decision. Um, the first one is that you're looking to do your development using an open source software product so that you're, you're not constrained by any license fees. But eventually you want to move this over to Oracle. And since Postgres is uh, very compliant with the Oracle standards, it is much easier to take something that was written in Postgres and bring it into Oracle. And this comes down to the fact that Postgres is fully ACID compliant so that it allows uh, a lot of the Oracle standards to be implemented within it. Also, if you have a requirement for any sort of custom features, this is another place that you might look to move to Postgres. If you're in uh, doing a lot of work with geospatial data, this might be another reason that you look to Postgres. If you have a desire to support uh, a lot of concurrency in there and you don't want to have the uh, have to worry about read lock contention, um, Postgres uses something called multi-version concurrency control, MVCC, and it enables uh, a high level of concurrency. And then last of all, it's kind of the desire to, what I'm calling, build your own box. And this comes back to the idea of the extensibility of Postgres and the ability for it really to be what you need it to be. So that if you're looking at all these other database products that are out there and you're saying, you know, I can get 90% of what I need out of these products, but it's that last 10% that I just can't find here. I, I need something that is really going to be outside of the norm. That's where you might uh, find yourself looking You might be asking yourself, why is Percona talking about Postgres? Percona is known for being uh, a big player in the MySQL and MongoDB spaces. And this is because we are adding support for Postgres into our uh, supported options in here. So you have one place that you can come to for support on MySQL, MariaDB, MongoDB, and Postgres. And this allows you to really reduce the overall cost of support because you're able to take uh, advantage of some economies of scale there. And this gets you some business answers really quickly so that you can move forward with things. Uh, we are able to support Postgres whether you are running it on-prem or in the cloud. And of course, that is true of the other. If you have any questions about Postgres or our support products, you can always look to our website. Uh, Percona.com. You can contact the support team from there and you can also take a look at our blogs and forum posts.